these issues that we're looking at these days are indeed tough issues. Uh, they are indeed difficult issues and I'm certainly not pretending to be dealing with them fully in the few minutes that these uh, short presentations allow. But today the question is this, around issues of gender, do our bodies matter? Does it matter if we have a male body or a female body? Or is it more important how we feel inside? In recent years there's been uh, an enormous surge in young people looking towards the whole issue of gender identity services for help and for support as they struggle with confusion around their gender identity. The issue of choosing one's own identity as male or as female regardless of one's physical body is certainly on the increase. People with a, a male body choosing to identify as a female or someone with a female body choosing to identify as a male. As always we must as followers of Jesus Christ turn again and again to, to the scriptures. The Bible tells us that every human being is made in the image and in the likeness of God. God created man in his own image, in the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. Genesis 1 verse 27. This is true regardless of our gender, it's true regardless of our feelings, it's true regardless of how we identify on any given day. In the same scriptures where we have the wonderful life-giving truth that we're created in the image of God sits another truth that we are created male or female. It is right that we should embrace who God has made us to be. God has made us beautiful in his image. We may not feel beautiful. We may not feel that we are male as a physical male or feel that we are female as a physical female. We may feel confused. A young man called Andrew writing about his own experience around confused feelings about his gender identity has said this. He said, I vividly remember the day that I realised I'm a man. I was about 27. You might think that's a bit odd to be realising something so fundamental about myself at that age. And it's true that it wasn't totally a new revelation, but it hit me almost as if it was. Andrew, as he was growing up, felt that he didn't quite fit in. He didn't like the things that other boys liked. He didn't connect well with other boys. At a time he, he wondered if perhaps he was a girl. As a man, he was never convinced that he was a proper man. But in that moment of realisation, Andrew writes, I realised that I am a man, a real man, a proper man. I don't have to act in a certain way to be a man. It doesn't matter that my personality and my preferences often align with what's deemed more traditionally female. These things don't make me a man or a woman. I know who I am, the, the identity God has given me. I have the freedom to embrace how I am with the unique personality and preferences God has also given me. God is a better story for all of us. A better story than gender discomfort. Things aren't always how we would want them. There can be a disconnect between how things are and how we would want them to be. How things are and how we feel they are. And that's true too of our sexual identity. Just as true as it is in any other area of our lives. A disconnect between how we feel ourselves to be and who we actually are. In our fallen world, we cannot ever know that we are a new creation in Christ. A new creation 
in Christ. Paul writes in Galatians, For in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is no male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. The reality is that the medical evidence is not very encouraging when we look at the uh, outcomes, the results from those who have trans transitioned from one gender to another, from male to female or from female to male. But the power of the gospel to enable us to discover, like Andrew, who we are in Christ is life-changing. As church, are we those who speak God's love and God's grace and God's truth clearly and lovingly and tenderly into a broken world and into confused lives. You and I can take our confusion, we can take our pain, we can take our feelings, our, 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 our lacking to God. The Psalms are full of such prayers to God. We would do well to read them and to, to pray them. The church, that's you and I should walk closely in ways that don't condemn, but ways that carry the burdens of others and to enable those who are struggling or suffering to discover the grace and goodness of God. We need to enable people to know Christ and discover the freedom of knowing who they are in Christ. At the end of the story of the Bible, it's a story of hope. And we read in verse 4 of Revelation 21, He will then wipe away every tear from their eyes. And death shall be no more, neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more. For the former things have passed away. God's church, like Jesus in this and in all these issues, needs to be full of grace and full of of truth. Let us pray. Go before us, Lord, in all our doings with your most gracious favour and further us with your continual help that in all our works begun, continued and ended in you we may glorify your holy name and finally by your mercy receive everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.